हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज विवेक बजाज आई होप ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट सो एम आई फ्रेंड्स येट अनदर वीडियो फेस टू फेस सीरीज दिस इज माय एटीन फेस टू फेस वीडियो एंड आई टेल यू आई एम ट्रूली ब्लेस्ड टू हैव अपॉर्चुनिटी टू रिकॉर्ड दिस ऑसम पीपल आई बिन इंटरेक्टिंग विथ एंड नाउ वी आर वेरी गुड फ्रेंड्स एंड आई एम लर्निंग सो मच फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ दैम टूडे वी हैव अ स्पीकर हुम यू आर गिन टू रेजोनेट अ लॉट someone who has a very different profile but yet a very simple profile something which all of us would be knowing of and yet who have done phenomenal work in market as a derivatives trader so we have with us shiva hey hey vivek how are you very nice how are you doing very good fantastic shiva so thank you so much for coming all the way from bangalore to yes. calcutta and helping us record this awesome conversation with you my pleasure for you having me here and uh, looking forward for the interview great fantastic so friends this coming 16 minutes is going to be very exciting because today's topic is bank nifty option scalping well the whole country is doing that and everyone <laughs> wants to know the real mantra of making money from bank nifty option scalping friends sir shiva i just met him couple of minutes ago and i interacted with him he comes from a very humble background of hotel management and then you joined healthcare true and then you became entrepreneur and since 2015 15, you have been a full time trader that's right amazing story friends i'm already inspired and i'm having goosebumps <laughs> as i'm talking to him and i'm sure you guys are going to enjoy this conversation a lot but friends before i start with him a small request if you have not yet subscribed to our channel you have to subscribe because we are doing some good work and uh, like this video and give your comment we will request shiva to reply to all the comments we'll share his twitter handle also so that you can connect with shiva all these people who are connecting with us they all believe in this theory of open learning and they want to share everything what they have with everyone and also at the same time they want to be connected with all of you who are seriously looking forward to be in the market as a serious market participant so great to have you great to have you shiva as well thank you so much now let's start the conversation yes i mean i have already told people about you but from the horse's mouth <laughs> okay. we want to know about you your story why you are doing what you are doing what led you to what you are doing Okay, so just to give a brief background about myself, uh, basically I am a hotel management graduate. Uh, did my hotel management way back in '95 in Chennai, and then uh, got into the hotel industry for almost a year. But I was not enjoying myself because being in F and O, sorry F and B, and uh, look at me. Now I am going into F and O rather than look at telling it as <laughs> F and B. Uh, F and B is like food and beverage in the hotel industry, and uh, I was working in like banquets and uh, restaurants and so on. but i was not enjoying myself the reason being with the family and friends you would get not to meet them during the weekends and you get to see them during the weekdays where by the time they will be busy and you will be like completely having a choco block weekend with serving the guests at the hotel then i decided myself that this is not the industry which i wanted to be in then i told my parents initially they re- like reluctantly said no the reason is uh, we we have invested so much and this is the industry where it, you can make it a very good career in the future mm. but i always felt uh, shiva when you don't like it why you wanted to continue mm. and in 2000 that's when i started to get into the bpo sector because like one of my friend was working in a bpo and i wanted to always ask him like how was your industry he said like i'm having a 9 to 6 and i'm getting free lunch and what not i'm getting a free pick up and drop to the office i used to wonder wow this guy is enjoying his life and he's working for only 8 hours work but in the hotel industry we used to slog for 14 hours a day both physically and mentally demanding then i said okay let me also give it a try then when i went to the interview the interview like person said okay you are not fit for this industry the reason is like you are already into a healthcare background and you are earning a salary of more than 25000 here we are offering you a salary of 5k and we don't 
know whether you will be sticking around with this industry for a long time. We wanted mm. to invest someone who can work mm. on the long term. Mm. Then we immediately came out of that company. My friend said, uh, maybe you should be stuck around with the hotel industry itself. Then I was looking at the next building. And that particular building was like an... Uh, it, it is like an organization run by both brothers actually. Okay. One was running a customer support for the US company. Another one was running a healthcare company. Then I asked him, what is this company is all about? They are into healthcare and uh, revenue cycle management. They like take care of the US insurance process and so on. Then I said, can I go and try an interview with them? He said, come on, for customer service itself, they have rejected you. What are you going to do in a healthcare company wherein you are a hotel management background and these guys are running in healthcare? Hmm. Okay, then when we entered into the building, they said like, okay, we also like uh, take data entry operators, but if your typing speed is good. Being in the hotel industry, I'd never been to computers, hmm. but I asked them, can I give it a try? Hmm. Luckily, that Eja guy, like uh, I still remember his name, Sugant, he gave me an opportunity. Hmm. And I went and like did a typing test. They were expecting 50 words per minute. And my typing speed was 12 words per minute. Okay. And he said initially, nothing doing Shiva, you're not going to like succeed in this and uh, sorry to say. Then I asked him only one thing, just give me three months. If I don't perform, you can chuck me out. Even you can take me without any salary for the next three months. I'm happy to do it for free. Mm. Then uh, somewhere like he said, Okay, I can only walk you through to, to the next level. The next level is going to be like personal round and then another uh, uh, group discussion round. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll give it a try. Luckily for me, those two rounds, I was able to convince the people who were there on the board and they took me. And uh, within three months, I was able to like scale up the ladder in the same organization. And within six months, they promoted me to the next level. Uh, within a couple of years, I was able to be like a group coordinator and the team leader in the same organization. And that's where I met my wife. Things change. And as an organization policy, they don't want like both husband and wife to work together in the same <laughs> field. Then my wife had to leave. And after marriage, we thought like, let's move up another city where we can explore our opportunities. That's when I got an opportunity in Bangalore mm -hmm. uh, with another healthcare startup at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, they were having a 15 employee. Myself and my wife started as like 16th and 17th employees. Mm -hmm. And uh, touch wood, like it was in 2004, and things progressed from there. And 2010, when we left the organization, both of us left at the same year. We had like more than 5,000 employees. I was managing almost like a 500 member team at that time. Amazing. And I had to leave because of like, again, another good opportunity came from Bombay uh, in the same healthcare background. Joined that organization, worked as a director for them for almost two years, uh, managed some of their uh, best accounts. And at that time, like few people who have been working with me, they moved across to different uh, cities and abroad. Uh, we all got on a phone call as we like uh, alumni, like we got on a phone call and asked like, what are you doing and how things are? And one of the friends suggested like, why don't we start up our own venture and so on. Okay. And the very next day we started our own venture without even any doubt, of, uh, like thinking about our uh, capabilities. Luckily for us, we got an investor who real, like totally be believed in us. And he was the one who completely pumped in the funds and other things. So we had the ideas and he got in the funds. And within like three months, uh, we started with five employees. Uh, within four years, we were able to scale up to 800 employees and we were able to exit the company as well. My dream has always been like to retire myself at like 40 years uh, because me and my wife used to have a plan also. That plan is called Plan X. When I say Plan X, like we wanted to retire, but we needed to have an X factor. That X factor is the money. Yeah. Okay. You needed to make the money before you wanted to retire. And luckily, like things happen and at an young age, I would always say, this is the time for you to take whatever the risk which you wanted to. Because mm -hmm. you, you can fail, still you can come back. Not necessarily, you can't take a risk at an old age, but young age, you will always have the motivation to come back again and again. Right. Okay, so that's what we did. And happy, it worked out the way I wanted it. And at 39, I got myself like completely retired, made some money. But getting into the financial markets, mm -hmm. uh, 2007 and eight was the year, wherein the, before this is right before the Lehman crisis happened. The entire market, like uh, we were into almost to the peak, mm. and you name a blue chip, like those days, the like uh, IT, uh, sorry, the uh, reality was the blue chip mm. stocks, mm. Uh, DLF, Unitech, and you name it, I would have owned all those stocks. <laughs> My friends were saying, like, hey, I bought this stock and it was giving me fabulous return. Why don't you also invest in that? 
and i said like okay this guy is earning something and he's also making money from the market why don't i also get into the portfolio management and have make some money mm. and the same guy told me shiva i used to trade dl up at 1500 my portfolio now it has come to 700 rupees it's a very good buy screaming buy why don't you come and buy it believing in him without even realizing what the stock market risk are mm. and other things mm. i invested it uh, we had a life saving of almost 10 lakhs during that time because over the period we accumulated the fund and so on and i started to invest 1 lakh initially without even realizing i pumped in the remaining 9 lakhs averaging the next one year and you would name it all the stocks i would have had it like the jp associate the rnr rl and bajaj finance tata motors and so on by end of 2008 when the lehman crisis and the satyam saga unfolded uh, my portfolio came from 10 lakh to 1 lakh as a common mistake any basic person who entered the market would do that's what i did as well i just sold it everything when the portfolio was at 1 lakh that was the time i should have accumulated at least the quality ones but we didn't know what is the quality and other things i sold dlf which i bought it at 700 at 120 rupees and you won't believe that is the low that was formed in 2007 mm-hmm. and similarly the other stocks as well and even if today if i would have been holding the 1000 bajaj finance which i got it at like an average of around 170 if i would have been holding it i would have been making crores Absolutely. but when you are in a fear and when the bottom were like you don't know where is the bottom is getting formed you would tend to do all these mistakes right and then like immediately after a year you don't have any funds to trade and you can't tell your wife as well that we lost everything in the market then after a while like uh, i told my wife yes this is what has happened and uh, luckily like things didn't go in our favor she was supportive she said like anyway we earn this year and we will be able to earn that again as well but i never wanted to leave the market after a year or two but i never took a loan to take a trade okay after a year or two then again went into the market because we made some money there was some pbvp the performance bonus which was being given by the company and so on but this time i didn't believe on myself what did i do the next thing as a any regular trader would do you go for a tips provider who will provide you the tips and saying that okay this particular stock is going to give you enormous return why don't you buy and by the time you realize these guys are not giving you tip they are give, making you enter the market so that they can give an exit to someone else oh wow. that's what the trips provider yeah, normally correct. does right so i think you have started with the good initiative of educating the people people on not going to the tips provider when i read that article i was mm. like okay this is what happened to me in 2008 at least vivek is trying to help someone so then i okay then this is also not working then i again step back out of the market for a year then came back again in 2011 again that's when like i started to invest my time on my company mm. and once you started to get into the leadership position you will not have much work to do because you are going to delegate most of your work correct somewhere in your mind it was always showing shiva you lost something on the market why don't you try to do something to recover about that then i said okay let me also get into the market again those days now i started getting into options and the stock futures okay because like friends are telling me okay if you are lost in the cash market the best way to earn quickly is get into the stock futures and options absolutely okay <laughs> then again we started into options but we never realized that is the area wherein you can also quickly lose the money so without even realizing like my losses were accumulating mm. but at the same time something was like pumping the money i didn't realize that i was losing so much mm. by end of 2014 then i saw like stop this madness this is mm. not going to continue mm. if you wanted to be like in making money in the market you can't continuously losing it just because you're earning somewhere mm. that doesn't mean that you can lose somewhere absolutely then i said look okay, okay when i started to be a full time trader i started with like a 5 lakh fund let me see whether if i'm able to make money with this 5 lakh rather than keeping a crore into the account and not making any money and by the 2013 and 14 i started to create my own portfolio as well now i realize i'm not going to do the same mistake what i did earlier i was looking at the nifty pe ratios of the stocks and the nifty as well and i decided myself if the nifty pe ratio goes to 24 and beyond mm. i'm going to sell no matter what i'm going to clear my entire portfolio i had a portfolio of close to a crore and it almost doubled mm. more than like after holding it for 2 years then i sold it completely Uh, i there were some stocks which was giving me 200% return there are some stocks which was not even giving like i was it was into negative 50% mm. but i sold everything because it doesn't make sense for you to sell the winning stocks and then having the losing stocks correct 
I sold everything and then I told myself, you're not going to enter into long-term portfolio until you see the Nifty PE ratio coming back to 20 levels. Okay. I know in the last three years, the PE ratio has been like it's enormously been up, crazy yeah. at like 26, 27 and 28. Correct. But I convinced myself, Shiva, don't tempt yourself. Let the range come to you. You then be en entering the market. Right. It may or it may not, but I'm happy to wait it out. That's something. And in the meantime, I started to explore on the intraday. And uh, earlier, I used to lose a lot when we had nifty monthly expiries and so on because I didn't realize. I always used to think that anything goes up has to come down, anything comes down has to go up. Hmm. But we were not looking at the OI data, whether the writers are making money, how they are making money, and with the time value, it will come down, the prices will come down. Those things I was not sure about it. Right. I was not having the basic data also. Then once you start losing money, then you will get to know, okay, you are doing something terribly wrong. Why don't you learn from the market? Because you already paid a heavy price for your like learning in the market. Then I started to like understand the concepts of open interest. And now I consider OI has been my god actually. Right. Once you know how to interpret the data of OI, that will really help you to go on long way. Absolutely. And especially with options, that is going to be very, very critical, especially <coughs> when you're trading on index options like Nifty and uh, Bank Nifty. And 2016 is a year when Bank Nifty weekly expiries came into the picture. Wow. I thought it is going to be a boon for people like me. But initially, it was like so haywired and uh, writers are making huge money and you tend to lose a loss. And there is a myth being created in the market, only sellers make money, the buyers doesn't. Yeah. Uh, if there are buyers, there need to be a seller. If there need to be a seller, there need to be a buyer. Right. It's going to be based on demand and supply. At every level, if there is a demand, you will have a supply also coming in. If there is too much of supply, there will be like, demand also will be in question. That's when I thought like, okay, if people say that the sellers are more into the market, then I let it be like on the other side, wherein as a buyer, I can also make money and I can prove myself not to prove anyone i wanted to prove myself whether you will be able to be a buyer because buyer like having a limited risk and at the same time if you know what is the risk which you wanted to take you can take and then you can earn that as well right and i was holding uh, some trades any trade which i was holding it beyond 15 minutes to one hour it always 90 percent of the time i was losing money right then i decided like there is something seriously wrong because when you're doing 100 trades, 90 trades are in profit. But this 10 trades is eating away all your profits and more than that as well. Then that should be something in a way where you can make money. What is that? That's how I started to get into scalping. Oh. Okay. Scalping is an art wherein you can enter and exit within like 2 to 5 minutes. And any trade which you are staying beyond 15 minutes, 90% of the time I have lost big. Oh. Why? The reason is like because of the time value and the way the trades go against your favor because you will keep averaging it if you wanted to get closer to your price. But if you know there is an entry and exit available based on the charts and some of the OI data, you can be a very good quick scalper. Some of my trades will last in less than 10 seconds. Some of the trades will last more than like 3 minutes to 5 minutes. But it may be like 3 to 5 rupees per trade or 10 rupees per trade. Imagine if you do 10 times a day, hmm. you're more making more than a person every day on your capital. Right. Imagine one person on every day, within 20 days, you're making 20%. That's like, in a five month, you're going to double your capital. What more you need? And I was able to do it successfully in the last two years and my success rate would have improved from 60 to 90% as of now. Wow. Scalping is like, uh, is the best general, like if you're an option buyer. Absolutely. And if you know that you can quickly enter and exit the same trade, yes, you can make money in options as well, option buying as well. Awesome, awesome. So friends, this is like a uh, amazing story. It's like a plot of a fantastic movie. Uh, Shiva the trader, <laughs> the scalper. It is a very exciting story. I think a lot of people will resonate uh, with your story where people uh, had some passion earlier. But I'm seeing Shiva, you are a very enterprising person. You always have thought about going to the next level. True. Do you think that's a personality trait uh, which defines a successful trader? Yes, and luckily for me, I have a diversified background and okay. that helped me as a trader. But because like many traders who enter into the market, they don't survive beyond two years. Right. Especially when they come into the market with like a 1 lakh capital, 2 lakh capital. That's yeah. what happened to me as well, initially. Right. And they run out of funds pretty quickly because they don't know like what they are trying to do. By the time you realize you would have already lost a fund and the next moment what you were thinking is, 
how can I get my funds back into my account? You won't even think about the losses. Yeah. You would have been thinking about like, I got 1 lakh into the account. Now the loss is at 50K. Hmm. Where can I get the remaining 50K so that I can keep my account at 1 lakh? Absolutely. That's the trend with most of the traders. And some of the traders who come into the market with the like um, money taken from a personal loan and right, so on. Right, right. That is the biggest mistake which I would always say. Any money which you can't afford to lose in this market, you should never trade. Because that is the biggest trade for me as a person. When I believed in myself, I don't want to take a loan. I don't want to take uh, money which I can't afford to lose. Even if I do something, still I should be able to say, Shiva, you have lost something wherein you're, it is not going to pinch your pocket or it is not going to pinch your family as well. Once you have that mindset in you, you are never going to lose. And at the same time, as a good trader, you should always have this. Treat both your profit and loss at the same length. That okay. which I have done. Right. Okay. Even if I take some profits, yes, I'm happy with that. Even if I lose, I know, okay, this has come from the market and this has gone into the market. Yeah. So once you have that ability built in you, automatically you will have the discipline coming in yourself. Absolutely. In fact, I'll just share one experience with you. I met one of the large uh, discount booking firms, not want to name them, okay. the owner of the firm. And he said that the biggest challenge of discount booking to certain extent is retention of the client. True. Because they have this ratio called 90-90-90 ratio, which is like 90% of the client lose 90% of their capital in 90 days. Exactly. So the problem lies that most of the people who are coming into the system, they get so excited with the whole concept of trading True. that they land up going overboard and they lose 90% of your capital in 90 days. And how do you then continue with those people? So as you rightly said, the objective then becomes not to make money, but to refill that exactly. account exactly. and let uh, the account be there for uh, So it has become kind of a video game for a lot of people, no? Honestly, and uh, just to add to what you said, why it happens actually? Because the, these traders, once they get into the market, it happened initially as with me as mm, well. Mm. Once we make in the money in the first month, it will always be, they will be saying, right? It's an honeymoon period where yeah. you will tend to, market tends to reward you. And yeah. whatever you touch us, it will become like a golden goose for you. Yeah. But within a month, you think that you are supreme, then the market. And you try to double your positions or like extrapolate into 10 times. Hmm. First month you would have taken like 10 lots. The immediately once you see you are making money, you think that okay market is going to reward you everything and you would start to buy 100 lots. Right. The losses will manipulate. And for me like I always understood the market works on a pattern. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand what is the pattern at which the market is in, hmm. you are you are not going to make money. Hmm. Imagine even in the last year, people who made money in the first quarter or the second quarter, the April, May, June quarter, mm -hmm. they would have lost big money in this like October, November and December. Absolutely. Because they were following the same pattern what they have been used to do it. And market is not going to reward the same way. There will be like a period wherein buyers make money, there will be a period wherein sellers make money. We needed to identify which is the period which is suitable for us, try to go extra mile and then make money rather than trying to make the same amount of money all through the year. That's not going to happen. There will be a lean phase. You needed to control yourself. Don't be a compulsive trader. Try to like know what your limitations are, how much risk you can take. And if you're able to book your profits at 10,000, you should also be able to book your losses at 10,000. Don't wait for the losses to go to 1 lakh and then think about, oh no, should I book it or not? Okay, let me take a like a put all my money in. That is never a game. And most important thing is for me, the recent change is what I have done to myself. This has been working magic wonders for me. Okay. One, I try to use my previous day profit as my stop loss. Okay. So say for example, if I earn one lakh in the previous day, imagine you are entering the market thinking that. You're not going to risk your capital, you're going to risk only your 1% of your, uh, or like whatever the profit which you earned the previous day. That way, in options, you cannot have a strict stop loss here. Because in Bank Nifty nowadays, it goes to 100, comes back to 10, again goes to 200. Whatever the stop loss which you're going to place in options, it is going to get triggered anyway. In this way, like I'm able to maintain the success ratio. The reason is, I'm entering based on the charts. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I, can, I know I can mm -hmm. risk up to a level wherein I can afford to lose that money because I have earned it the previous day. So that way my mentality changes. The next question asks, what if your previous day is a loss? What do you will do? Then use 10% of your deployed capital as your stop loss. Then you're never going to lose much, much bigger money in this market. Awesome. So friend, this is a fantastic at risk management method he has just communicated to you. Can you just give it once again to our users? Okay. So I said, 
which I've been following it in the last one year. What I did, I used my previous day profit as my stop loss for the very trading day. If I earn one lakh the previous day, that one lakh will act as my stop loss for today's trading day. Say for example, today morning you are taking an opening trade because many people used to ask me, how come you are taking a trade at 9.15 itself when the market has not given you or shown you the charts and other things. You needed to do a lot of preparation for the pre-market. Mm. But when you know that you have made money in the morning, now it is time for you to protect your previous day profit. Don't consider that previous day uh, like profit is going to be a result for once you make money today. Mm. Today morning if you have made 20k, then that 20k will act as your stop loss for the remainder of the day. Another important thing which I have started to do is, my morning trades and the opening trade would be like going big. When I am really convinced, I go with volumes. Right. But once you make money, try to cut down your position, take and handle small quantities. If you would have been handling like 10 lots in the morning, Try to cut down to three lots once you make money and that to enter when the market is giving you a reward. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, do not. Mm -hmm. That's where like it made a huge difference to me actually. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So <laughs> now, uh, Shiva. Yes. Options scalping. Mm -hmm. Very interesting topic. Huh? And I have been blessed as I said in my initial part of the video that I have been interacting with so many people and there have been some really good guys who are doing incredible work in options. At least I have seen some of them, their balance sheet, and I know the work which they are doing. Some from South, some from Gujarat, and are unbelievable guys. And everyone has been talking about either buying an option or mm -hmm. a selling an option. And is there pretty much clarity that selling of option has certain risk parameter and people make money there. True. And buyers will lose most of the time, but when they make money, they make very big money. True. Right? That's a general notion now, well established without exactly. without face-to-face -face audience at least. But scalping of options is something which is very new. Can you first define what is scalping? Okay. Uh, if I say scalping, scalping is nothing but you're going to do a job where you're going to enter a trade and once you get a signal, you're going to buy a particular strike and mostly I do it in the uh, in the money and at the money. Okay. And you just enter a trade at like 200 rupees and quickly it goes to 210, you start trading it. For me, like I am getting unlimited brokerage. Right. So anything above like 25 paisa is going to give me money. Oh, so you have a scheme which is unlimited yes, brokerage. Yes, and oh. also like uh, I shared it with my like participants as well because like I've been getting this for almost 10 years now. As a scalper, first thing you should not be worried about is, you should not be worried about the brokerage yeah. and the amount of charges which you are going to pay. Once these three, two things out of your mind, you can always take trades very boldly. The reason is, you know anything about 25 paise, it is going to get to give you rewards. And as a scalper, there will be trades which will give you 10 rupees, there will be trades which will give you like 50 rupees also. Imagine the couple of days back, I took a trade, I'll just mm -hmm. show you one mm -hmm. example. Uh, that will give you a clue what we are trying to say okay so this is the uh, latest example mm -hmm. okay so look at this uh, we start we i entered it when the market opened at 915 okay okay the second was 91502 and i exited at 91510 okay oh. within 8 seconds this is how the scalping works we entered with like 294 this particular strike and exited at like 336 almost like a 42 point within eight seconds. Yeah. This is how the scalping need to be done. And, and typically, you will, what would be the size of the trade? It varies from like 200 quantity to 1000 quantity. Okay. Sometimes it is almost like 10,000 quantities as well. Okay, so you can actually trade scalping with a very least capital. If someone wants to do yes. a 200 share or 1000 like, share, how much I always suggest like uh, hardly like 10, 20K. 20K, 30K should be good. Absolutely. There have been like people who have been like uh, who have been my webinar participants who have been consistently making money even with like 20k capital. So friends, if you have limited capital, scalping is the best. Scalping is actually the best strategy. The only catch here is that you need to select a broker who gives you unlimited brokerage plan. Exactly. Someone who wanted to like buy at like 40 rupees a lot or 20 rupees a lot, it may not work. Mm -hmm. But uh, someone who, who is willing to say, for example, we have a plan where it like 4,000 rupees a month. Mm -hmm. And imagine one day your cost will be covered for your brokerage. The remaining 19 days, like you can just work on whatever the money which you are making. Mm -hmm. So and there are brokers who provide unlimited brokerage yes, plans as well? I got it 10 years back at like 2000 rupees a month. Wow. But the same broker is offering at like 4000 rupees a month. But even here, do not choose a broker who gives you high leverage and so on. Because right. I have seen in the past people go bust and so on. 
look for the reliability look for the software because for me the terminal is very important and mm. at the same time the support is going to be equally important right, right. if you are able to get a broker who provides both of this you definitely needed to go for it right great and Fantastic. i have uh, like i've seen their historical record as well and i've been trading with them for almost 10 years right. so that has given me the comfort absolutely yeah so how did you originate this trade i mean what's your theory like is it technicals price pattern or okay Say for example, the morning trade were morning trades. This one we have taken it at nine fifteen oh two. In this one, like I don't get to see the chart or anything. Right. We are just going to go by the data what the previous day analysis showed me. Okay. So what are the things which I normally yeah, typically yeah. do? Like most of the things which I use, it is all like freely available over the net. Nothing you needed to don't buy any fancy software or fancy uh, system which you needed to install and so on. My mm -hmm. first thing, what I do, I track the world markets in the morning. Okay. I track to see like what how the Dow and the A Asian and the European markets are closed on the previous day, and how Dow futures is trading on beginning of the day, and what is happening. So as we are speaking, I am going to tell the tool also to people sure. so that it's easier. So investing dot com. It's yes. probably the tool you would like to do for this. Exactly. Yeah. Like, look at this. I all I already have it. Here. You already have it. Fantastic. So yeah. I track it and look at the way Dow futures closed on the Friday night. It was like almost 180 points now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next thing, what I would be keenly looking at is the Asian, like looking at the Bloomberg for the any like real time news. Nowadays, like you needed to watch for even for a Trump tweet or a coronavirus <laughs> and so on. Okay, so every new news that is going to impact the market. 7 p. 7 a.m. in the morning, you would have seen Dow like almost at 100 points in the positive. Mm. By the time our markets opened at 9, Dow would be at like 80 points in the negative. Mm. Whatever the view which I was having it at 7 doesn't hold good at 9. Right. So I needed to be prepared for that as well. And I would also be keenly watching our Indian news on like both money control, stock edge and then the ET now right. to see what's happening around the world. Right. And most importantly, I will also look at the VIX. Okay. Okay. This will also give me an hedge over the intraday trades. Okay. I know some people use it for the positional, even I use it. But even for intraday, combining with the Dow futures along with the VIX, it will also give you a good insight. This is the EOD VIX. Yesterday's VIX, no? No, this is the EOD VIX. You will get it on the real time as well. Yeah, but that is only after market opens. Yes, market yeah. opens. Yeah. But I'm already prepared myself with the OI data. This is the key. Yeah, so yeah, I think oh. this is something which all our users will exactly. be very interested to know that what language OI speaks. OI, when I say OI, we always have, I have built an uh, inbuilt tool which okay. will help me to see how the OI has been building up through the day and also for the rest of the, rest of the day. Okay. This is say for example, end of day data. Here I will get to see the data whether like how the respective strikes was imagine for 12200 or 12100. Mm -hmm. What is the trend for the day? And this is an inbuilt tool, so don't expect some fancy stuff. We are just like trying to uh, automate few of the things based on my preference. And here we get to see the trend for the day, how the OI has been building up. And everybody knows it, how to read the OI and other things. Yeah. But how to interpret and make it to your advantage, that's the key thing. Right. And that's where like I try to decode and help my like participants also decode the uh, OI data. That right. is going to be very, very critical in terms of taking a trade at the opening. Right. So right. based on this, on this particular day, I would have taken an opening trade, whatever it was suggesting me that, yes, right. Shiva, it is going to be a bullish move on this particular day, why don't you go and opening take a trade. Right. But if I'm really convinced with the data convincing and everything happening according to the trade plan, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I would have taken a large quantity. But right. if I'm not, then I will try to test the waters to see whether the market is moving as per my direction. Right. Out of 100 days, if I would have considered myself, I have been like good enough on 90 days, that's more than sufficient. But if my trade goes against a favor, then I needed to be quickly exiting as well. Because opening trades are very risky and I would not suggest to everyone until and unless you have done your trading for six months to one year, know what you're doing in the morning. Right, right. Without that, yes, I would not suggest anyone to take the opening trades at all. Because I would have entered like in fraction of a second and within minutes. But everybody who thinks that, okay, I can enter and exit the same way Shiva did it, you will get caught. It will require experience and it will also take some time and you have to practice a lot. Right. When you look at OI, it's essentially the EOD OI you look at for your Correct. next day trade. Correct. But intraday OI, do you look at intraday yes, OI also? Yes, that's the reason we developed this tool. The oh. reason is, whenever you get a crossover <laughs> on our tool, we have set some certain time frames. That has worked magic for us actually. Whenever the crossover happens on both the strikes, on a particular strike, say for example 12,000 C or 12,200 C and P, and immediately we have seen at least it gives you an opportunity for 30 to 40 points on graph. 
and that's where like I start to look at the chart as well. But the yeah, Shiva intraday OI is delayed, right? For me, I'm looking at a 15 minute delay also. Yeah, yeah. Still, it is working wonders for Really? Me. Because yes. exchange, if I'm not wrong, exchange gives intraday OI three minutes delay. Three minute right? delay, but you, you, you can always get your real time OI in the trading terminals. Okay. Okay. But what I normally use it, I use that OI for the trend. Oh, okay. okay. Once I get the trend, yes, the market is going to move downwards. If the riders are going to be busy writing on 12,200 put, Rather than I will go and buy like in the money at 12,200, in the deep in the money at 11,900 on the call side and make quick 10, 20 bucks. And this is where like my charts come into the picture. Can we can we just uh, discuss one trade or something which you have done based on OI and you have seen the impact on the chart and you actually did that trade? Yes. Just to give a more practical understanding of you. No go. problem. I will do that. Any, any which you yes. have in top of yes. your mind. I mean, not no, I'll just go with the chart so that it, it is easy to correlate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This particular day, mm -hmm. I missed the opening trade. The opening trade, the market fell. Okay. Okay, and fell with the volume. I consider anything more than like a 50K volume in Bank Nifty to be a good volume. I always look at volume candles for me to give my strength, whether which way the market is going to take a direction. The first this two is candles. What, 15 minutes candle? This is on a three minute candle. So actually. you are talking volume in a three minute three candle. Three minute candle. Okay. 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 Three minute candle it will be sufficient on a chart to take an intraday scalping position. Got it. And this particular mm -hmm. day, the market fell in the opening minutes from the level of almost 29,500. Okay. It quickly went to a level of like 29,300, so on. Okay. But I missed this opening trade. Okay. Then I was waiting for the next opportunity to see whether there is further movement towards upside with volume. If it is not, then I should quickly be able to enter the next trade when the volume is building up. Okay. Okay. So 944 was the next one where I was able to enter this trade. And look at this. This was almost like a big large candle more than 200k volume. Okay. This is on Bank Nifty Future. So what did I do? I immediately entered a trade mm -hmm. on the same 29500 mm -hmm. at a price of almost 300. So imagine what would have been my entry and exit on this trade. Can you believe? I entered at 944 at 309 with 1000 quantities, 309, 311, 312, 314 and 31 mm -hmm. with almost 1000 quantities. Mm -hmm. And 945, I was able to sell the 1000 quantities at 400 rupees. Wow. 90 points in a scalping in one minute and it gave me a reward of almost 89,000. And this is just by looking at the uh, price. Just the looking at the data. price and then the OI data. Okay. And along with nothing else, the candle. For me, anything which is more than 50K on the opening side, and if it is there is a follow up also, I would quickly jump on it. But so I would wait for the follow up candle. That's yes. your experience that you believe right now 50K volume in a three minute candle is a resourceful volume. True, true. And trust me, on this particular day, the Bank Nifty closed at 758. This particular strike closed at 758. Oh. Still, many people would be wondering, guys, come on, this guy has only made 80, 90 rupees, whereas this closed at 750. There have been days, the same 400 can go to zero as right, well. Right, right, right. That's the reason I started to believe in scalping. Some trades would give me like 5 rupees, some trades would give me 100 rupees as well. My day is done at 945. What more I need? Like I wanted a 1 lakh to be made and I'm done with like almost at 945. Then I would quickly like scalp, started to scalp on the same day. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me, are, are there any other trading opportunities available? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a plenty. When mm -hmm. you know that there is going to be a support and resistance to be played for the whole day, mm -hmm. that's when I start to play my intraday position. Okay. Okay. Another question which will come is, why are you having multiple accounts to trade? Mm -hmm. Earlier when I used to have like all eggs in one basket, what mm -hmm. happens? You tend to, your monkey mind will always come into the picture. Once you make a losing trade, you will try to average more and more without even realizing that you're deploying your entire capital on one single trade. Mm. Okay, there have been days where I have lost my entire capital on one single trade as well. That's when I decided I'm not going to put all eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. I have multiple accounts wherein I like have 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs and 15 lakhs. The reason is if I'm really not confident, I'll use my 5 lakh account. If I'm really good, then I'll go for all out on a 15 lakh account. And at the same time, once you make money in the morning in a particular account, close that account and move on to the next one. Think that you are starting the day fresh. 
that way you are going to make money in multiple account and at the same time you are also going to not lose your money because you know that you have made a profit on the previous day use that as your stop loss once you make money in the particular day once started to have that money use that as your stop loss for the remainder of the day guys uh, he has some serious uh, way of doing a very crude way of money management have two different account maybe the account which has more capital and higher chance of money is in the name of your wife <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately no but she trades as well <laughs> she trades on her own account it's actually a fantastic way to manage your money have two different account trade in one account make some money close that account for the day start a fresh with a new account fantastic on the same day i'll just give you another example i just closed with like 1 lakh on this account mm -hmm. what i did i immediately went to the next account mm -hmm. So how did you have multiple account with multiple brokers? Oh, uh -huh, yes. <laughs> you look for brokers who are giving you like the best trading terminal and use the trading terminal which is comfortable to you. Absolutely. I still like have Zeroda with the, like a Nest. People ask me, Zeroda doesn't provide Nest. How come you are having it? For the whole customer, they are still retaining it. And I told them pretty clearly, as long as you guys are providing Nest to me, I'm going to hold the account with you. Right. If you're moving away, then I may not be able to. Right, right. Okay, so this is a particular account on the same day. Mm -hmm. Look at this. The first account we took the trade in one account and then made money. Mm -hmm. The next trade, I have I would have done like several pages actually. So, if you this scroll through sprawl pages actually, oh my but God, here this is a serious scalping ledger. As a scalper, like if I made like one lakh sixty three for the day, uh -huh. I don't mind paying twenty thousand to the government as a taxes. That's yeah. what we should be because look at this. I'm not paying any brokerage as such. All the money would be like coming in complete scalping. On this particular day, we made around one sec. Let me just okay. So take a look at look at the example actually. So based on the confidence, you would take several trades as a scalper, mm -hmm. and most of the trades would not last beyond two minutes. And look at this. 921 the trade was entered 922 I'm out. Mm -hmm. 927 and 929 I'm out. Mm -hmm. 949 50. And if you do multiple scalps through the day, there have been trades which would give you like 5 rupees. There would be days, there in some trades which will give you like 40, 50 rupees. Everything was based on the entries available here. Fantastic. For me as a scalper, I look for more of like a uh, zigzag day rather than a trend day. Mm -hmm. As a trend day, you won't get much support and resistance where you can play as a scalper. But if it is a zigzag day, that's the best way for a scalper because you know there is going to be a support and resistance with the low volume day. And you can play on both the sides as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I remember when I started my trading desk uh, here, we have 150 traders here. We started with scalping. Oh, and wow. that time, Algo was not there. We're talking about 2006. And commodity, currency, equity, it was so much of opportunity to trade scalping. These days, because of Algo, scalping has become more rule driven or more exactly. complicated and more complicated and you you know the volume uh, we make yeah, like yeah. in 2015 the overall fno turnover was like 3 lakh crore right. nowadays even on a normal low volume day we are seeing a turnover of like 15 lakh crore right. and that within 3 years mm. so we are going to fight more against algos and if you are going to hold a position for a long time you are going to lose the most Absolutely. and scalping works wonders you needed to beat the algo sometimes you needed to enter and exit as well quickly Right. That's going to be very, very key. And that's what, like, uh, talking about one example, I just wanted to share it. Me and my wife, on a Friday morning, we were going for a movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wanted to check myself, am I a true scalper? Mm -hmm. Okay, we were going for a movie on the car, and uh, in a particular signal in Bangalore, we, our car stopped, and I was looking at the signal, it showed me 120 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I just took out my phone. My If my wife would have seen it, she wanted to, always, like, when we go out, she wanted me to stay away from the mobile so that I don't get connected to the market. I just said, I'm just going to look at a couple of messages, but I immediately opened my trading app and I just saw a trading opportunity. And I wanted to challenge myself to see whether I'll be able to take a trade and exit the trade before the signal turns to green. And I yes, I did that and made around like 10K on that particular trade. Oh, that day. <laughs> Almost that week's expenses. The, the movie expenses, the lunch and the lunch that was there. I was able to cover. And then I showed it to my wife. Today's day is done for you and me. So what do you want? Where do you want to go for lunch or dinner? <laughs> That's very interesting. Very interesting. So basically, scalping is about entry and exit frequently. Yes. And you use price pattern, which is the exactly. typical candlestick and the chart, volume, yes. volume and open interest to do the scalping. Exactly. Part. Along with the IV data as well. Yeah.
फ्रेंड्स आई गॉट कनेक्टेड विद शिवा थ्रू अ कॉमन फ्रेंड बेस ऑफ कैलकटा ही एक्चुअली वेंट टू दिल्ली टू अटेंड योर वर्कशॉप शिवा हैज़ अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वर्कशॉप ही टेक्स वर्कशॉप ऑन वीक डे यस ऑन वेंसडे एंड थर्सडे ही एन एक्चुअली ट्रेन हीज पार्टिसिपेंट्स विच यू स्टार्टेड कपल ऑफ वीक्स अगो विच ही मैंशन दैट ही जस्ट स्टार्टेड बिकॉज ही वॉन्टेड टू गिव बैक टू पीपल and it's a very interesting format where you actually trade and show them whether things are working exactly. for you or not so it was very interesting model one of the things when i started to do the webinar because when people ask me like uh, shiva everybody can do a weekend webinar and show on the screen this will yeah. work and other things then i decided myself what is that which we can give it to the users where they needed to believe yes people as a buyer also can make money mm-hmm. that's when i started to do like on a weekday Right. So initially, when I started with the online webinar, I used to do it on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Wednesday, where we will focus more on the training aspect. Thursday is the day wherein I will share my trading and also my live trading ideas, so that the people who are confident and comfortable they can also trade along. Mm-hmm. And looking at the way how things have been panning out in the last six weeks, where I have been traveling across cities, conducting the webinars and offline sessions on Wednesday and Thursday. all my trades are in live in front of the audience yeah, yeah. so that they will be able to connect and they'll also feel lot more confident and uh, glad that one of your like participant has come and given you a feedback there have been people who has been attending all my webinar across the cities the reason is the first session someone who was not able to take a trade after the fifth or the sixth, sixth session he says proudly i know what i'm doing now with the data i'm getting lot more confidence to do what i'm thinking to do absolutely absolutely so uh, friends we uh, it's not that we are trying to promote his workshop here we like what he is doing that's why we thought that we should uh, share this with you in case you guys are interested and we also requested him to conduct a webinar for us so that our online users who can't attend the offline can take advantage of the strategy sharing so he was kind enough and he did a webinar with us uh, some of you may have attended the webinar it's a great piece which he recorded and um, it's also available i'll give you the link in case you want to take that webinar friends we charge a very nominal fee for the webinars as i have always told, told this in multiple times there is a cost associated with running True. a company and these uh, cost hey, makes you serious about the content because you pay for the content that's why you want to use that money and also it helps us to recover the cost of the exercise which we are doing we are almost 100 people organization trying to do a lot of things for you guys so do take that webinar if you believe that uh, you want to build yourself as an option scalper as a serious occupation uh, thanks uh, thanks vivek on that note i would definitely say like some of the webinars whom you have been doing it with definitely helps a lot yeah. because uh, earlier when we entered the market in 2007 and 8 we didn't had this kind of an exposure and right. what you and your team is doing is is phenomenal yeah. but on that note i definitely need to thank you because you guys have invited me for the webinar and it was a wonderful having you guys and having a discussion with you as well thanks thanks shiva So guys um are there so much we can talk with Shiva I mean your experience your wisdoms of life and your strategies obviously you have given an understanding of what kind of strategy True. you have deployed but uh, if you know Shiva I have to talk to you about people who have come into the market in last 2 3 years and uh, frankly speaking when i travel all around when i take my workshops webinars i see that uh, generally there is a bit of discontent because people have come on board in the last 2 3 years uh, thanks to the theory of low cost of transaction and and obviously a discontent among people in their existing occupation that an it professional is doing the work but is not satisfied True. or a businessman True. is struggling in india right now because the business is not growing in that situation lot of people have come into the market but Correct. not really made lot of money True. so if i have to ask you that what would you advise them how do they should look at the market now uh, like many think that market is a place wherein you can make 10x and 15x every day mm-hmm. i would honestly and sincerely suggest to the people who are there please do not enter the market just think that you wanted to trade in options first of all avoid that that's like the easy way to make money and it is going to kill your like uh, what to say the way you wanted to approach a market mm-hmm. enter it with the cash market understand it just give yourself 6 months to 1 year do not be in a hurry this market is not going to reward if you are going to be in a hurry and look for low returns uh, like people say like otms will give you like big rewards for me otm is out of the market ha ah, yes okay so term it that way uh, you, if you are going to trade only on otms you are going to be out of the market pretty soon right. that's the reason most of the traders who have come into the market in the last one or two years 
they have pretty much gone vanished. And when you are having a low book rage and discount brokers, and I know I'm not content with or whatever that I'm earning in my life and I wanted to make a secondary earning. Even if you wanted to earn a secondary earning, you needed to find a way. This is not gambling. This is not casino. If you have an approach and discipline, I can guarantee you anyone who enters the market, be it buying or selling, you can make money if you have the right approach and know what you are doing. That is very, very key for me as in a scalper or a buyer or a seller. Awesome. So Shiva, thank you so much for this lovely interaction. Thank you Great so learning for me as usual. And uh, I'm sure we are going to be friend for life and yes. we are going to be in touch with each other forever. Thanks uh, friends for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, the, I enjoyed this thoroughly. And for me, it's a new learning. I'm going to try this also in my firm and see if option scalping is something which we can adopt. You should also try this. There's no harm in trying and you just need a small capital for this. It's so awesome because you know overall the margin structure in India is getting stricter. You need more capital to trade. But as a scalper, you actually need much lesser capital. That's a new learning which I have taken from this video. Hope you like it. Hope you have subscribed to our channel. Hope you will implement what you are learning from us and stay with us forever and improve your learning journey in stock market. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you so much for listening to me and uh, thanks Vivek for giving me a wonderful opportunity to showcase my option scalping and how scalping can also make, you can make money in the market. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.